intelligence service. They'd rather folks not know about. Uh, and then the CIA is not supposed to operate domestically, but of course they do. And they're all just running around power grabbing over there. And the Russians are kicking them all out. The Russians are massing troops. And the Russians are probably going to end up taking half of Ukraine. Now, there could be a deep double cross where they've made a deal with Obama to divide the country in half and act like there's a war going on. That's very immoral. And that may be the saber rattling that's going on. But you wouldn't see all of these sanctions and the type of nastiness going on if that was the case. So I think that's in the cards that if the West can't get what they want, they may go with that. Or they may be trying to tell Putin to do that, but he thinks it's a setup. I think it's very fluid because what they do is, as Kissinger has read a lot of his books, they, they create the chaos and then try to gauge, like pool, they break the balls on the first on the first uh, go and then kind of look at the angles. And so they've kind of cued the balls up, you know, racked them, broken the rack, and now they're looking at how they want to cut this diamond, basically. And both sides are doing that. And the problem is the Russians may be corrupt, medieval in ways, but they're smart. And so they've already thought of every angle, just like the globalists have. And that's why it doesn't work out because the Russians will fight, folks. I mean, again, if the globalists can't beat the Afghanis, they can't hold Baghdad because the Iraqis are willing to fight. And, of course, the globalists don't care because they just want to be there and make money off the no-bid contracts. The only reason the globalists can win an unwinnable war is because they don't want to win a war. They want a bunch of chaos, see? So they really have won the drug war. More drugs on the streets, more people in prison, more money being laundered. It's not a failure. It's a success. They've won the war on illiteracy, dumbing people down. They've won the war in Afghanistan. They won the war in Iraq, destabilizing the country, turning the western side of it over to al-Qaeda, putting burqas on the women, kicking them out of college, getting rid of, you know, western music on the radio. Understand that the globalists want, want Stone Age chaos everywhere, but in their reservations, their command bases. They, and that's exactly what's going on. Literally, the globalists playing the Russians and the United States off against each other. And there's a big fight in Afghanistan over the 500 billion a year in opium. It was only 50 something billion a year before the liberation. Now it's up to 500 billion. Look those numbers up. 93% of world opium production turned into loving heroin for your daughter's veins. Loaded on C-130s and flown into Europe and the United States. <laughs> Publicly. And then the police pull you over and want to ask if you have any drugs in the vehicle. <laughs> As you're driving your children to school where they'll be propagandized every week about all the different serotonin reuptake inhibitors and amphetamine drugs they need to take. The government cares about everyone. It's run by good people who want to help us. No, the government's run by the Bilderberg Group. The government's run by George Soros. Literally run by Spectre. By the way, you know Spectre is basically real. You know Ian Fleming was in MI6 OSS and wrote all those books. And he was a spy chief. You know they're just flaunting it all in your face when you go see movies like the latest Born Supremacy film. That's actually real, that viral research. That's on record real. That's 20 years old, real. They just flaunt it all in your face. It's all public. They're geoengineering the atmosphere. They admit they're doing it, but the details are classified. It's a giant, got to be a $100 billion program a year. What we know about is $5 billion Department of Energy. I mean, who knows what these nutcases are up to? All I know is it's going on. We better find out exactly what's happening. And we don't have time to sit here and debate this anymore. And they've got a plan during a foreign war to get us all lined up behind the executive to stage attacks and say domestic groups in the Tea Party have joined with foreign powers. And they think the military is dumb enough to actually go up against the gun owners in a civil war while the communist czars and New World Order minions working for the banks sit in their armored fortresses and watch us kill each other. And you know what? We may be dumb enough to do it. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's just so frustrating. 
to know how it all works, to understand basically every angle of it, and, and just sit there and watch it happen. The good news is the Pentagon, what was it, already five, six months ago, said no about the Syria uh, escalation and the open public arming of al-Qaeda because the military knows about Benghazi now. They were all watching it on drone feeds, and, and hundreds saw it, folks. Thousands were told about it, and people don't care anymore in the military. They're not scared of getting arrested or disappeared. They picked Bradley Manning to blame because they knew they could talk about him being a transgender and discredit anybody that was a whistleblower to scare everyone in the military from leaking information. But you can't stop the enlisted and non-commissioned officers when they're being given manuals demonizing the Tea Party and gun owners and veterans who are their daddy and their mommy at home. It's over. You traitors have been identified. You think we were just going to sit here, the patriot movement, while you built this tyranny over the last 50 years? We've been holding you back. We've been exposing you. We've been laying your program out. People warned me and I activated as an organic Texan against the enemy.